grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All Saints Day, the day we remember the martyrs of the faith together with our own blessed dead who have gone through the great tribulation of this life and now join in the ranks of that great multitude that no one can number from every tribe and nation and people and language. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember before you those who rejoice upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which none can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh. Might we too be counted among the communion of saints through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Be seated. During my vicarage in Delaware, one afternoon, I walked through an Episcopal church in town. Inside of their sanctuary, just on the inside of the exterior walls, imagine even here, like some, uh, a wall going down uh, on the outside of the pew, they had two walls of stained glass. And depicted on both were saints. Saints you're all familiar with, St. Augustine, St. Francis, St. Luther even. They were all there, standing in line. Their hands were all folded. They were all facing the altar, and it was as if they were walking up to the Eucharist. It was quite a stunning image. Beautiful, actually. The names of the saints were written above their depiction. But among all the well-known saints, there were those without names. Some of them were just children. And this was not a mistake. These were the less obvious saints, the anonymous saints, saints who walk among us unnoticed, unrecognized, no fanfare, no publicity at all. You know, most saints are just like that. But let's face it. Most of us are not very good at being saints. I certainly am not. Even on a good day, it's hard to live in faith, hope, and love. On a good day, it's hard to live as Christ has taught us, especially when people persecute us and revile us, as he says, making fun of us. And as is becoming more and more the case, killing us. And yet we carry on. Regardless, we come into this place yet again to sing our hymns, to pray our prayers, to receive the forgiveness of sins, and to partake in the Lord's Supper. But as we enter this place, we are not simply entering an empty space. We are coming into a community far greater than that which we can see with our eyes. For we enter the worship of heaven. For you see, at every divine service, heaven comes to earth with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. And this is chanted or, or spoken weekly in the liturgy. It hasn't, been done, it hasn't been done yet, but it will be. So listen for it. With angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven. Actually, you heard it in the first reading for today that so many of those anonymous saints are now clothed in white, living now in the beauty and love and light and joy and presence and peace and happiness of God Himself. And every week at just this time, you and I are privileged to join them rejoicing that heaven has indeed come to earth. We confess even in the Nicene Creed that we belong to the holy Catholic apostolic church and that one holy Catholic and apostolic church is made up of believers here on earth and includes all the believers who have ever gone before us in the faith. So on this day, All Saints Day, a day that could be filled with sadness and grief because we no longer see those whom we love. We still rejoice because we know that they are not gone forever. They are here. You see, if Christ is here, heaven is here. And if heaven is here, then all the saints are here as well.
and all is well. And I can say, Pete, present. James, present. Margaret, present. What is it that makes someone a saint anyway? Is it how they live their lives in helping others? Is it putting up with that certain unbearable someone? Oh, she's a saint, all right, for putting up with him. Is it a certain number of miracles performed in their name? It's none of those things. What makes a saint has nothing to do with the saint. Jesus makes saints. And he does it in the most unextraordinary way. He simply splashes them with water and speaks his name into them. He puts a cross on their forehead and he says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What makes a saint is what Jesus does, loving, baptizing, absolving, feeding, accepting. A saint is simply one of Jesus' own. So why does the church set a day aside to remember the saints? Well, because we're quick to forget. I mean, we got a lot going on. Yet we remember them because death approaches us too. It is easy to forget that we are dying. We are in the midst of dying. In the midst of your stress and busyness and worries, the Lord draws you, though, unto his church to remember all the saints. And taking us aside, he bids us to sit on the mountain and to listen to his sermon where we hear that the Beatitudes are all about Jesus. The gospel appointed for the Feast of All Saints is not a long list of what you must do. It is a long list of blessings that have been done by Christ and then given to you as a gift. For you see, Jesus is poor in spirit. Jesus mourns. Jesus is meek. Jesus hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Jesus is merciful. Jesus is pure in heart. And Jesus is the peacemaker. Jesus is also the persecuted. He is the one who is reviled. But in all of that, Jesus is perfectly faithful to his heavenly Father. He is a living beatitude, a living blessing to all of us. He is our atonement. He is our cover. He is our blessing. He is our life. He is the resurrected Son of God, and he sits in the midst of all the saints today. And in a moment... At his table, he comes to be among us as well. Beloved, what goes for Jesus goes for you. You are now poor in spirit, for you come as a beggar. You mourn, for suffering is great in this world. You are meek, meaning that your strength is not of yourself but another. You hunger and you thirst for righteousness and so you come to the altar for food. You are merciful, forgiving those who trespass against you. You are pure in heart, committed to God in all things. You are a peacemaker, speaking the redemptive word to your neighbor. You are persecuted at times for righteousness' sake. As the world hated Christ, so it shall hate you too. You are blessed not because of all these things, but because Christ does all these things in you. And this is what makes you a saint. Jesus, doing his work in you and now through you, the seal that went on your forehead at your baptism, the holy cross of Christ marking you as one redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, it now describes your life as the saint of the Most High. Truly, we're blessed, but we don't always see it. We certainly do not always believe it. And as I said earlier, we're quick to forget. But our fathers and mothers, our spouses, our children, our friends, those who no longer mourn, suffer, or, suffer, or are persecuted, those saints whom the Lord has called home, these have received their reward and their blessing in full. And now they feast at the Lord's table without any sin. Imagine that. 
They feast at the Lord's table without any worry or doubt. They now see the Lord face to face. They now rejoice. They laugh and they sing. They await your joining them at the marriage feast of the Lamb. Make no mistake. Vivian. Present. Maggie. Present. Blessed are those who fought the, the good fight of faith. Blessed are they who now behold Jesus Himself face to face, alive, not dead forever. And blessed are we when we know them to be with Christ. Blessed are they when they come to this altar to sing and to pray and to eat and to drink and to rejoice and to live. Blessed are they today when they join you at this very rail. Blessed are we to be family once again, all together, every last one of us. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds for all the saints, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand together.